for shame. Hey y'all, my name is Nat. I hope you're having a terrific day today and for this video we are going to be doing a 24-hour comic book reading vlog. All right, before we get into anything bookish, make sure to hit like and subscribe down below as well as tell me in the comments what is your favorite comic book character. If I plan this correctly, I believe this video should be coming out the day before National Comic Book Day, and I thought what better way to celebrate than to do a 24-hour reading vlog of nothing but comics. I'm going to be doing the timer method because that worked out really well for me last time I tried it, and anytime I do 24-hour readathons, I always sleep. I like sleep way too much, okay? But if I do the timer method, I do actually read for a full 24 hours. And last time I did it, it worked out very well for me. So right now, my tentative plans are, first, this giant Civil War bind up for Spider-Man specifically. I borrowed this for my brother. He owns the entire Civil War series, except for one, which apparently is very hard to come by and also really expensive. Spider-Man is a pretty integral character to Civil War, very pivotal character as well and I do kind of already know that main element that makes him so important but I also I appreciate Peter I, I like him a lot and I'm very intrigued to see how his character who's usually so laid back and cracking jokes handles this very serious situation so if you don't know what Civil War is in the Marvel Universe or if you only know it from the movie let me explain Civil War takes place after the government institutes this bill which requires anybody who has superhero abilities to register with the government. And there are people both for and against this. The big names heading each team are Captain America and Iron Man. Cap is against and Iron Man is pro. Each of them have their reasons for it. It is definitely very messy. That is a super big comic book arc, which is why this alone only follows one character and it's huge but there are multiple others. If I work through this and have enough time, I might go read one of the others. Anyway, that was a really long explanation for the introduction of this first comic. I also borrowed Batman The Dark Knight Rises by Frank Miller. Um, this one is basically following Bruce after he has retired. Last 10 or 15 years, he has been retired. He is no longer Batman, but Gotham has basically become a total crime wasteland and he ends up coming back. I believe the major villains in the story are Joker and Harvey Dent, or Two-Face, um, but also Bruce ends up having to go up against Superman, who now works for the government. I've been wanting to read this since Batman vs Superman came out because there are some scenes from the movie which are literally cut and pasted from the comic books. Also, Frank Miller is a lot more brutal. He definitely doesn't shy away from the violence that comes with fighting crime, and I can't wait for it. Then I'm gonna work on my Spider-Gwen run, which I'm in the middle of. I have 3.5, which is Spider-Man and Spider-Gwen sitting in a tree or something Something like that which is following the Miles Morales Spider-Man just to clarify. Then I have volume 4 Predators, volume 5 Gwenum, and volume 6 The Life of Gwen Stacy. All of these are by Jason Latour and illustrated by Robbie Rodriguez. I would also love to finish out the uh, Harley Quinn run I'm in the middle of which is 4, 5, and 6. I still don't remember all of the subtitles, but I do know they are by Amanda Connor. My rough TBR, but these are comic books. So on one hand, I'll probably work through these a lot faster than a traditional novel, but at the same time, I don't want to give myself like this giant TBR because I just feel like in reality, I will end up not meeting my expectations. Rather, I like this, which seems fairly manageable. And then if I finish all of this, I can go borrow more comic books from my brother. <laughs> Uh, like I said, I'm going to do the timer method, meaning I'm not officially starting yet. I'm actually going to go take a shower because I just feel really grody and have had quite a day. After I get out, I'm going to officially dive into one of these. I think I'm going to do Spider-Gwen first. So it's 
2.37 and I currently have this much time left. I've gotten a fair amount read already. So I read spider Gwen Volume 4 Predators last night. Technically, um, the Spider-Man Spider Gwen one is 3.5, but that I checked out from my library. I would have had to read it on either my phone or my iPad and I really needed a good night's sleep. So I, I didn't want to be reading on a digital device right before bed. Rather, I focused on this one. I finished it and I did really enjoy it. I like how serious this series has become now. Gwen's father is actually in prison and he is planning that when he is put up on the stand to finally explain why he believes Spider Gwen or Spider Woman as she's known in the universe is innocent of this crime that everybody believes she's committed. The only way to showcase how serious he is in this, how much he believes this is true is if he has something to lose, which obviously going to prison would be a really big loss, particularly since he was a police captain and you know, that's gonna be really dangerous. But at the same time, there's humor. Um, I, I love just sassy, quirky, joking Gwen. She's so entertaining. And then we see actually an issue where we're focusing on her band. Basically, MJ is convinced that Gwen is Spider-Woman, but the other two in the band don't believe her. And she's constantly just throwing out all of these reasons why it makes perfect sense. The band's relationship without Gwen and then you also see how important this like little found family is. I, I really appreciated that. Then there's like the bodega bandit who is absolutely hilarious. He is her worst enemy because he basically just goes around stealing food from different bodegas and it's it's so funny. I love him every time we see him on page. Also with this being an alternate universe, I adore anytime we get to meet characters and see how they have changed from the original 616. In order to lead into the next volume, which is the, the Gwynnum one, we're introduced to Elsa Brock, who also who also introduces to us the Venom symbiote and explains how it works in this universe. We see a little bit of Wolverine and Shadowcat, and Shadowcat actually was a Weapon X uh, experiment as well, so that was really fun. Yeah, across the board, I really enjoyed this one. I definitely think this was a jump in enjoyment from the last volume, and I'm very happy about that. The art style also seemed a lot more cohesive this time around. It didn't have these like really glaring changes between issues. I've been working on this mammoth this morning, God, this thing is so heavy. I looked it up and apparently this thing is like almost 600 pages. I am right here. So I've read a lot this morning. I'm really enjoying this. Some of this stuff I definitely did know, but it's a lot more entertaining to actually see the story play out. I am fully on Team Cap's side, so I love any time we get to see it any bits of him, but we also see how crazy impactful this war is on the superheroes' personal lives, not just in regards to like the political ball game that's going on, not even just the war. Entire families are now getting put in the middle of this, which is why it is such a civil war. Not so much with Spider-Man, but in some other side characters. I mean, unfortunately, the Fantastic Four has separated because Reed is for registration, whereas his wife and his brother-in-law are against it and then um, the thing kind of just pieces out because he refuses to choose a side and that is a big reason of why I love him actually. Ben Grimm is a fantastic character and he does not get enough appreciation. One thing I will say in regards to the composite of the book on the whole, I do think it's a little weird that like it's not given to us in full chronological order. The first, I don't know, let's say 200 pages of this is all a linear timeline where we are following Peter working for Tony, the introduction of this registration, him confessing his identity to the world, and then seeing the ramifications of that mostly as it plays out in the grand scheme of the Civil War. But now it's weird because we backtracked to seeing where he was still working for Tony, but we were seeing how this impacted his life on the daily as a superhero fighting against his rogues gallery. I just, like that just seems really odd that it would do that. Like, I guess I understand because you want like the real meat of the story to all go in a linear format, but I don't understand why you wouldn't have put that where it made sense 
chronologically speaking. And then now I've hit the point where, again, we're seeing the impact of it in his personal life with uh, his wife, Mary Jane, with his Aunt May, and then his rogues gallery. That I'm at the part where we're seeing Peter's life after he's spoken against the registration and how it's impacting his everyday life. And we actually got an issue through Mary Jane's eyes alone. And I really liked that, seeing as how she's more of a normal person, but being married to a superhero, like obviously this still impacts her a great deal. More so seeing as how Peter started on one side and transitioned to the other. And then we also see from Aunt May's perspective. I, I really loved that one. That one actually almost made me cry because we got some flashbacks with her and Ben when they first adopted Peter, how protective he she's become of him, even though he's still a superhero. It was so cute. I really, I really love that the authors took the time to do that and highlight how this is impacting normal people. Oh, I actually forgot. There was a issue through the eyes of one of Peter's students and we see whenever Peter reveals his identity and this kid's perspective shift from Mr. Parker is this nerdy biology teacher to oh Mr. Parker is Spider-Man. <laughs> that was a really really long winded way of saying I'm really enjoying this I just think the layout it could have been done in a better way. I was really hoping to finish this this morning, but it's 2.30 and usually I head to Josh's around 3. I am going to take a few books with me to Josh's and then I'll have some on my phone from my library, but I'm not going to take this baby because this thing is chunky and it is killing my wrist to hold it up like this. Also did not realize how perfectly I stayed on theme this morning. Was not planned to pick up my Spider Gwen mug, but I did so. And then I'm actually currently wearing a Spider-Man, well like Spider Universe t-shirt, I guess, let's say, because it's like all the different Spider-Men from alternate universes. Hi friends, um, so you know how I said this is like a 24 hour reading vlog and I, I didn't know if I was going to complete it on the weekend? It's Monday night. I still have this much time left. <laughs> I didn't read anything on Sunday. I just was not in the mood, not mentally at all. Uh, I think I read probably five different fanfics though. However, I just finished doing some reading sprints on my channel with a few friends and during that time I actually was able to get a fair amount read. So, starting out. I finished Civil War Spidey. I really liked this overall. I think my just like biggest complaint ties back to why was it laid out this way? It just felt very all over the place. We did get another issue where we actually got to see through the eyes of Felicia Hardy, um, Black Cat for those of you who are unfamiliar, she's basically like the Catwoman to Spider-Man's Batman. <laughs> so we get to see things through her perspective, which was kind of fun. I, I liked the fact that like we really saw some growth through her also. She's a character I've always really enjoyed, so I, I liked getting to see more of that. I haven't done an official Copile breakdown, but honestly, I think this will probably be like a four stars. I really liked the story across the board. I thought there were some really funny moments. There were some great just one-liner jokes, but layout was really weird and left much to be desired then. Also finished reading Spider-Man and Spider-Gwen sitting in a tree. This Gwen ends up going alongside Miles on this adventure. And I did really like this one too. I love the dynamic between these two. We saw some fun different things that affected their relationship, especially as they're traveling between all these different universes. I once again wasn't a fan of the layout. The whole volume starts at the beginning with Miles telling the story to his two friends. And and he's explaining how he starts out by trying to go find his father who has gone missing after he started working for S.H.I.E.L.D. again. And somehow by the end of it, he ends up making out with Spider-Woman or Spider-Gwen. Throughout like the first four issues in here, we see his friends making jokes here and there, jumping in with one-liners, or at the very beginning, they would be utilized as a way to kind of remind us of what happened in the previous issue if, you know, you weren't reading this in a collected volume. But like in the last issue, that just completely disappeared, which was really odd. And we never see that final kiss with Gwyn and Miles. So it felt really odd that like at the beginning you showcase that to us and tell us that everything's leading up to this but then we don't even actually see it. It was weird. The final issue across the board just felt really rushed. Like the final battle, it, it didn't really have a lot of time. You didn't get to savor it. It just kind of happened. 
So all in all, I enjoyed that one, but I think it was more of like a three star. I don't know why layouts are bugging me so much, but they are. So I also read Gwenum volume five and I really liked this one. I, I really enjoyed how dark things got whenever there's the introduction of Venom. Pretty true to any story where Venom makes an appearance. It just was so contrasting with Gwen's character. It just exacerbates all of her negative qualities and the way that was utilized to further the story was really clever and I, I really enjoyed that. But the final one, The Life of Gwen Stacy, I was not expecting that sort of a finale. We hop some more universes, we see different Gwens. Uh, we actually see the classic old school 616 Gwen. Also, the entire way Matt Murdock has been changed for this universe, like the shift in his morals it was so clever and like the background he has it was so true to the original but like twisted in a way to make him more villainous and i i loved it it was really cool the, i highly applaud the writers for how they handled matt murdoch so between these two I, I do think i'm gonna give this a four star life of gwen stacy though i think this is a great way to end out the series and i'm i'm gonna give it a five star i really liked this one it, it was fantastic and i i want to see more gwen i have started a a little bit into Harley Quinn volume 4 call to arms and basically Harley is creating this entire gang of other Harleys. It's ridiculous but it's so entertaining. The names she comes up for them they're awful but they're so funny. <laughs> like there's a guy and so he's Harvey Quinn or there's a woman who's from Harlem so she's Harlem Quinn. <laughs> they're so unoriginal and they're so dorky but like they're so entertaining. I do think most of those characters don't really have a ton of personality. They're I don't think they're really gonna be a long-standing portion of the story and then there's also a little bit of a romance for Harley that's going on and thankfully it's not with Joker but it's not with Ivy so I can't be too supportive of it. <laughs> Hey friends, uh, so it is Thursday. Yeah, this vlog has gone much longer than I was planning and I still have this much time left, so we're trucking through. So I don't remember if I mentioned in my last update that for the last few days I have been waking up a little bit early and reading some comics. Those have been exclusively on my phone, meaning they are for the Harley Quinn series. Uh, I just finished, I think it was volume four yesterday and I did enjoy it. I just, um, I, I think I'm getting a little bored with this series. <laughs> like not bored, um, it's a little monotonous. Every single issue seems pretty similar. Majority of the time I do kind of have a hard time distinguishing them from each other. But even with that, they are entertaining. They're definitely funny. There's lots of crude humor, many, many sex jokes, um, lots of innuendos. <laughs> Nudity is becoming a lot more prevalent as we go on, which like I don't particularly care about. I just don't necessarily know if it's really necessary because they still censor everything. So obviously these are still just rated teen. I guess nudity is funny to teenagers. I don't know. So yes, I liked this one, but all in all, it's nothing absolutely fantastic. It didn't totally stand out from the rest of the series. 3.5 stars. I've since started into the fifth one, which I can't remember the name of the entire volume, but this one we were focusing more on Harley trying to save her new boyfriend. And because he was technically responsible for the mayor's son's death, the mayor and people he works for keep sending out different assassins or hired guns to try and kill this guy, Mason. I don't care about the relationship between Mason and Harley, we've barely seen that much of it. And really all he has going for him is he's kind of attractive. The hijinks that Harley gets up to trying to save him are a lot more fun and then she ends up kind of having this rivalry with the mayor because of that. We do see a little bit more of Ivy and also some Batman, which was very entertaining. You can tell Bat's nose, she's trying to go straight, but she's still Harley, things are still chaotic. People are still gonna die and he doesn't want her in Gotham any longer than necessary. We also saw her standing up to Joker and kicking his ass, talking about how she's never going back to him and she's finally realized just how much he messed her up and I did really appreciate that. I really enjoyed it. Apart from that, last night I did start into The Dark Knight Returns. None of these are very long. I think every single one of them is roughly around like 50 pages, but there is a lot of text already. Really enjoying it. I don't remember if I gave a summary, but basically 
to refresh your minds, The Dark Knight Returns is a alternate universe, I guess you could call it, where Bruce decides to retire from being Batman after his second Robin, Jason, was killed by the Joker. He has no longer been Batman for roughly 10 years. Gotham is still as violent as ever, and unfortunately this 10 year anniversary is really weighing on Bruce. He's really struggling to not return to the cowl. Bruce basically watches the movie Zorro and he remembers why he originally became Batman. He remembers the original idea that he had and I absolutely loved how it was done. I really enjoy the art style in this. So there are some pages that are more traditional comic book with the little bubbles and everything, but there are also some where it's kind of broken down like you're watching a TV and you're seeing each person running their commentary. Cool pages where you're alternating back and forth between the TV show and then what's actually happening. Like this one where you're seeing people talking about Batman and then you also are seeing a chase in which Bats has finally returned. I'm really enjoying it. We already saw Carrie Kelly as Carrie Kelly. We haven't met her as Robin yet. But I'm just, I'm really excited to continue reading this. I've seen a few pages already where those scenes were literally cut and pasted into the Batman versus Superman movie, which is so cool. I'm very excited for more of them. We're just gonna keep moving through. This vlog is running a lot longer than I was expecting, but this is showcasing to me that I don't read nearly as much in a week physically as I think I do. Hey guys, so it's Sunday. This video has officially been running for over a week and that is absolutely ridiculous. I wanted to get this done in a single weekend. For shame, since I last talked to you, I have finished out the Batman Dark Knight Returns story arc, omnibus, collection, whatever we're gonna call it. I really like this. It's so dark, it's very grim. Um, having a 50 year old Bruce who has basically lost all faith in humanity, it's hardcore, it's really rough, but at the same time, like he's willing to fight for the good that he knows exists. He is having such a hard time turning his back on something that meant so much to him. The political discussions that are taking place in this also really strong. I think based on like the discussions that are going on in this, you can see when this was originally written. Frank Miller does not shy away from how serious some of these topics are when it comes to like mental health, clear war, loss of humanity. I mean, there are some big topics going on in this, but it was so good. I really enjoyed it. I love, I love the final fight scene between Batman and Superman. It's so good. I, I love the discussion around like the powered individuals and them tying themselves to the government and like what happens there when they no longer think for themselves. They only act as a government uh, instrument. The art style isn't my favorite. Some of the characters, it's just kind of hard to constantly know who they are because of how the art style shifts. Angles are never flattering. I understand like most major characters in this are supposed to be in their 50s, but like <laughs> Frank Miller did Selena dirty, honestly. That's another thing. I really enjoy seeing how some of these characters in the main Batman storyline have changed by the time they're in their 50s and also how they react to what is becoming of Gotham. And especially an interesting tidbit with the discussions around war in this is Gotham City is actually based on New York City. In this, Gotham City still has the Twin Towers. Obviously a unknown parallel at the time, but also this has a lot, a lot more text than most comics, I would say, particularly on those pages with all the talking heads that I showcased with like the different news outlets discussing. And sometimes it could be a little confusing because you're like alternating back and forth between different storylines that are coinciding. Up. I, I do really like this ending. <laughs> I really like this. I liked it a lot. I'm glad I finally got around to reading it. It's really gritty, it's really dark, it's very, very reminiscent to Watchmen, which like, honestly, I could totally see the connections there. 
If I had to rate the entire bind up, I think I would give it like 4.5 stars because this is a comic book and like I wasn't really the biggest fan of the art style on the whole. I did really enjoy it. Now, obviously I still have a fair amount of time left. I am continuing to work through the Harley Quinn series that I am on, but that's kind of like the one I have on my phone. So anytime I just have a few minutes, I'm pulling that up. I didn't want to just purely read that and then not have the ability to do that anymore, seeing as how I still have nine hours left in this reading vlog. But I ran by my library and realized there's another comic book series that I had started, but I had never continued. So I grabbed the Miss Marvel series, which is specifically by G. Willow Wilson. Obviously, Miss Marvel has gotten a lot more popular in the last few years, but I started the first one, God, like probably two years ago now. I did really like it. It's very reminiscent to like a Spider-Man sort of character creation. I really enjoy Kamala's personality. I like the uh, cultural differences we see with her and the way that helps her stand out. I like how we get to explore a little bit of how that interacts with her identity as a superhero. That's a lot of fun. And then after enjoying the TV show, I just like it made me want to continue reading this series. So now that the Marvel's movie has officially been announced, I figure this is a perfect time to actually read it. I think there are like 10 or 12 volumes. So this is volume two. I checked out like two through 11 at my library. They did not have the most recent one. So I, I have to figure out what to do there. Anyway, um, so Josh is taking a nap, which means I have some reading time and I'm gonna work on this. <laughs> Hey guys, uh, so it is Wednesday. This vlog, which was only supposed to be 24 hours, maybe a weekend, has turned into <laughs> almost two weeks. It's ridiculous, but life has been very crazy. I haven't had nearly enough time to really sit down and read physically as I want, but we're still moving through. Currently, I have this much time left. I don't know how I still have so much, but I do. Last time I talked to y'all, I was starting into the Miss Marvel series. I finished the first one, Generation Y, no, second one, Generation Y. Across the board, the series is just a lot of fun. I adore the fact that Kamala is a superhero stan. It just makes all of her interactions with actual heroes 10 times more entertaining. And this one, we actually see her speaking with Wolverine, who he's not a full out mentor, but he does give her some advice here and there. And I really liked seeing that, especially at this point, Logan has been a mentor to so many other young mutants that I just, I love it. We also get to see her really exploring more about her abilities and learning where they actually came from because technically speaking, she's not a mutant. My biggest complaint with this one is the art is so inconsistent. Kamala looks completely different page to page depending on angles and things she she just never looks the same and it's weird i don't like that this one also rides the line between being shockingly dark and absolutely ridiculous the main bad guy is a clone of thomas jefferson who had bird DNA accidentally included in. He has the brain of Thomas Jefferson, but he has the head of a cockatiel. Weird. <laughs> but then the story itself regarding him is really dark. It's talking about how the world is naturally going to come to an end because of global warming and like there are too many humans. And because there are too many kids being born, they should be the ones to sacrifice themselves to ensure everybody else can live. So on one hand, I really enjoyed this, but the fact that the art was so inconsistent really bugged me. Ending rating came down to like 3.5 stars. I did enjoy this. The art, man. The art is a problem. I went ahead and continued with the third volume, Crushed, which a cute continuation. I think the first issue it was actually showcases Kamala interacting with Loki, somebody I wasn't expecting, but happily enjoyed their bickering. Absolutely hilarious. There's also a lot of teenage drama happening in this one. We see Kamala get her first crush, and then quite quickly after we learn that he's a bad guy. I understand what the authors were trying to do there, but I just felt like if they had taken a lot more time with that character, it really allowed us to get to know them, to become invested in Kamala's feelings for him, then I think it would have made that turn 
all the more shocking, but it all happens within a single issue. We do see a little bit more exploration of her powers, where they came from, and the whole drama going on with that. I also always love the little bits of her culture that are included in this as well. Her family, I adore them. They always make me chuckle. Her interactions with her, boo, they're so cute. He's, he's the most wholesome. The art consistency was better this time. So my drop down in rating was more for the plot. Still 3.5 stars, still having a good time. I just, it's a shame that thus far either the art is a problem or the story is a problem. Can we get one where both are working well? I hope so. Then I finished the fifth volume of Harley Quinn, The Joker's Last Laugh. I actually knew the subtitle this time. Weird, inappropriate, very out there, on brand for the rest of the series. But damn, that final scene that we get to see between Harley and Joker, it was so good. I loved it. That alone bumped this up in rating. With this one, I did come to realize that a lot of issues in this series feel like throwaways. They don't tie into the main story. They're more utilized as one-off adventures that Harley has and an excuse to make certain jokes. That's fine. It's plenty entertaining, but on the whole, it doesn't make this series like the most satisfying. When they actually stick to the story, I tend to enjoy it a little bit more. We do see the conclusion to Harley trying to help her boyfriend Mason escape from prison. Honestly, I don't feel like we saw enough of their relationship for me to be so convinced by the amount of effort Harley puts in to save him. I think it was a great excuse in order to have that final showdown with Joker and for her to showcase that she is officially over him. She realizes how terrible he was for her. And I love that. That alone made me give this four stars. <laughs> now I only have one left in that series and then I will finish it out. Hey guys, uh, so it has been a minute since I have filmed for this vlog, but currently I have this much time left and I have thankfully read technically two things. <laughs> it's weird. So first off, I finished out my Harley Quinn run with volume six, which was black, white, and red all over, I think. Right from the get-go, I was a little confused. I was curious on how this was gonna end, which now that I've done some research, technically speaking, this is not the end. It's like the end of this section of Harley's story, but Amanda Connor and Jimmy Palmiotti do have another run, which continued in 2016, that I believe should be going off of this. On one hand, this is the end of the series. On the other hand, it's not. The thing I wanna talk about with this one is we are introduced to Red Tool. Red Tool is DC's parody of Marvel's Deadpool. But what I find absolutely hilarious is Deadpool is a parody of DC's Deathstroke. There's a lot of layers to this character. He's not anything original. He is not new. He is a mouthy, quippy, violent anti-hero who just so happens to be obsessed with Harley. I did not expect that I would ever ship this woman with anyone who wasn't Ivy. And yet, I kind of was shipping her in Red Tool by the end of this. It's, I mean, I will be the first to admit, things don't start off on a great foot, but some of the stuff he does so perfectly matches with Harley's crazy and not in a psychopathic abusive way like Joker does. It's weird, it's strange, but I liked it. Apart from him though, across the board, this volume kind of follows the same layout that all of the previous ones do. It doesn't come together as a cohesive story. Each of these issues feel really random. Sometimes they fit, sometimes they don't. This whole series kind of does a thing where we have A, B, and C storylines, and the next issue is gonna continue with A storyline, and then you're gonna forget about the B plot, but three issues later, it's gonna pop back up and continue there, only for one issue more to continue the C storyline. Oh, but we're gonna round our way back to A and finish that one off before we get to C. It's really strange. It's very all over the place. On one hand, I do enjoy this series just because it's ridiculous, it's funny, it's, it's quintessential Harley. But on the other hand, as far as flow of a story goes, this whole series is awful. <laughs> it is so all over the place. I had such a hard time following it. I still enjoyed it. It's very meta. The Red Tool thing is one of those examples. I don't know why I liked Red Tool and Harley so much, but he was like the highlight of this entire volume and probably a big reason of why this one was at four stars. Just the dynamic between them was so entertaining to watch. It was better than Mason, the guy she dated and like broke into two prisons to try and save. I felt nothing between her and Mason. Her and Red Tool though, Within one issue, I was all over it. Apart from that one though, I also read a Superman comic, which is shocking, I am not a Superman fan. I had to do it for my May TBR 
put a link to that in the cards. I ended up reading Superman Whatever Happened to the Man of Tomorrow by Alan Moore. Technically speaking, this I uh, guess let's go with an arc. Only really takes two issues. The uh, volume of this that I read from my library actually had like three additional volumes following Superman. I didn't bother with those, I just followed the first two. Setting the scene, first off this was written by Alan Moore. Alan Moore wrote the Watchmen series, he wrote Batman the Killing Joke, V for Vendetta, From Hell. He has some really great stuff that I, I've either read or seen the movies of. Because of that I, I went into this expecting it was going to be a bit darker. However, the art style here is so classic comic books. This was written in 1986, but it definitely matches the style of original action comics. That is just such a juxtaposition with the dark story, and it really would take me out of it sometimes. It just was so odd, and the colorization is so bright and vibrant. Again, in comparison to this really dark storyline. We're following Superman on an alternate world where a bunch of his rogues come together. Unfortunately, it is believed that Superman ends up dying. We are watching as Lois explains the story to a reporter from the Daily Planet and we follow along. Even with the comic book styling and the story cognitive dissonance I was having, I did enjoy this, which is a little shocking because I'm not really a Superman fan. The ending is sort of a perfect example of why I'm not the biggest Superman fan. It feels like we were told this and then of course at the last minute it's shocking because we're given this. I can't go into any more specifics without spoiling but it's just a perfect example of my issues with Superman and why I don't tend to really enjoy his comics or even his movies. I mean when I watched Smallville I wasn't watching it for Superman, I was watching it for all the other superheroes that eventually came in. <laughs> I haven't done an official Copile breakdown yet but I'm waffling back and forth right now between a 3.5 and a 4 star. I could see this in that realm. Editing that will put an official rating on the screen. <laughs> Thursday. I want this video to go out tomorrow and I have this much time left. Yeah, it's gonna be a sprint to try and finish reading, get this filmed and edited ready for uploading. Good luck to future Nat. But I have been making some progress. First off, I have been solely focusing on the Miss Marvel series that I'm working on. Across the board with all of these, I can tell you I'm greatly enjoying it. So starting out volume four, last days, this one kind of has this like end of the world vibe that's going on and we get to see Kamala first off working alongside Carol Danvers who is officially Captain Marvel and I love seeing the camaraderie between those two. Right out of the get-go it's kind of awkward because Carol's like you're you're using my previous moniker um that's a little weird. She does become a mentor to Kamala and I love it because th it's this woman that Kamala has just looked up to so much, has based so much of her identity around, but has taken the identity and made it into something that works so well for her and I just I love that. I loved it so much. With this one we get some more exploration of the whole Inhumans story arc that was starting out in the previous one. For the most part I would say this one kind of all comes together to be like its own little story in this single volume volume, excluding the final issue. The final issue is actually a Spider-Man story where he works with Miss Marvel. It's also a little funky because it's Peter Parker's Spider-Man, but in this one, volume five, she works with Miles Morales' Spider-Man, so that was kind of wonky since they're from alternate universes. Uh, that's a little confusing. I should probably look into that, but I don't know at this point. Anyway, I liked seeing her with Spider-Man because anytime she sees a new superhero, she fangirls about them and <laughs> it's hilarious. She actually asks him about his dating of Carol Danvers, which was fantastic and just great. Like I said at the beginning, this one kind of has this like, oh my god, the world's gonna end thing that happens. There's this really big event that takes place in Jersey City. But what's really weird 
is it's not resolved. It, it happens. There's this moment where it seems like the world is ending. It seems like Kamal's about to die. Everything is going up in flames. The issue ends. And then the next one is the Spider-Man one. And it's really weird. I don't like that because it feels so unfinished. I don't understand what happened there. And if it's not continued, why? If it is continued, why the heck was it not included in here? I have so many questions. Kamala continues to struggle between trying to be a superhero, but also take care of the people she cares about. And we see a really great discussion between her and her best friend, Bruno. Uh, Bruno has feelings for Kamala and we find out that Kamala actually admits she has feelings for Bruno as well, but there is so much going on in her life that is standing between her and Bruno having a normal relationship. I really that it was it was like very mature but also fit very well with like the teenage feel of the story with this one I'm gonna stick with the 3.5 rating. The art style issue I was having previously is getting a lot better as it goes on. I'm guessing maybe the artists just kind of needed to find their groove with Kamala. So yeah, 3.5 stars because what the heck was that middle thing? I was having a great time, but like, why did it end like that? <laughs> and then in Super Famous, the next one jumps off and we know time has passed from that end of the world event that took place, but it's never explained. It's kind of just like, oh, a lot of time has passed. Oh, things are so crazy. Crazy. you don't realize what's going on as it moves by and it's kind of just explained away like that and it, again it's still not satisfying I don't like that why did they do that but on the whole this one still works as its own story and that's something I'm realizing I really like with this run thus far is each volume kind of revolves around its own little story but they all come together to work as a cohesive storyline and this one Miss Marvel is really struggling with trying to work between going to school, acting as a superhero, being an Avenger now, which I love that she's an Avenger, but we don't see anything about how that happens. And then her brother is getting married. And so she's also having to deal with some familial obligations there. I find the brother and his wife absolutely adorable. There were some great discussions in their relationship being a couple but coming from very different backgrounds. So Amir is obviously Pakistani. He is a pretty devout Muslim. And then we have Taisha, his future wife, who is a black woman that converted to being a Muslim. He dresses up in a traditional West African outfit for their wedding. And she dresses up in a traditional Pakistani outfit for the wedding. It was just so cute, the crossing of cultures. I loved it. It was, I, I really appreciated that. The way Kamala realizes she needs to put more of a focus on her family at this time and be there for them. and. It was just, it was really sweet. It was a really wholesome. We also see that Kamala's bully from the first issue realized the error in her ways when everybody thought the world was going to end and has actually sort of become a new friend. And I really liked seeing that. When reading this one, I think I would give it four stars because I really liked the discussions going on with this. It was just so cute and fun. I'm still annoyed about the end of the world thing, but it's a little less obnoxious than this. Currently, I am in the middle of volume six, Civil War number two. I wanted to talk about the bully character, Nikki. I believe that's her name. Now we're actually getting some discussions on sexuality with her in this one. And I, I just have to say like across the board, I'm very impressed with the number of important topics that are being brought up in this series. It's great. This is fantastic reading material for early teenagers to, to just dip their toes into some important topics that they might not be aware of and should think about in their lives. We also see a little bit of Kamala interacting with some of the other Avenger characters. Like I said, we see her with Miles Morales in this one. Or, well, that was the other one. And then now she's actually kind of struggling with her feelings for Carol Danvers because of this new inhuman who has the ability to see the future, but it's more like a probability of the future. It's not 100% guaranteed. So he can see if somebody is considering committing a crime. It's a very unexpected discussion around philosophy. They arrest the person and they prevent the crime from being committed is that a positive thing or is it a negative thing? Because they might not have committed the crime, but because you arrested them beforehand, we'll never know now. The discussions taking place in the series, so unexpected. We're also getting some exploration of Kamala's family, sort of seeing a little bit of that with flashbacks in Pakistan during the great war between Pakistan and India after 
India declared its independence from Britain. It's really cool because that element was utilized in the TV show, so I can see where the show drew inspiration here. Not only do we have philosophical discussions, but we're diving into some history in this one. Obviously, you can see my bookmark is still in this one. I'm, I'm still working through it. Good morning. Technically speaking, I finished out this 24-hour reading vlog. I say technically because I'm fairly certain I slept for like the last 30 of these minutes, but completed. I'm still waking up, honestly. Finishing out Civil War II. I really liked this one. Kamala kind of had to reprioritize, especially because Carol was so dead set on this like predictive justice thing and Kamala finally comes to realize why it's so problematic. I really liked how after that sort of wrapped up. We had an additional issue where she goes to Karachi and spends a month off, hangs out with her family. We actually get to see like a Pakistani superhero that operates in Pakistan, which right out of the get-go I was like, wait a sec, I recognize this person. He's in the TV show, that's why. Especially off of how things ended in the main story, I really liked that we had that because it kind of gave her the time to remember what's really important to her. The original reason she got into doing this was to help save lives. I'm just really impressed with this one. The art style was a lot more consistent this time around. Um, so with this one, I'm giving it four stars. And then I started into the next one, which is Damage Per Second. And this one, basically, Kamala ends up having this like computer virus a lot more dangerous than she realizes. Pretty cool! It's original! I like it! We're seeing her go up against something that she can't actively punch her way out of. She's got her work cut out for. The starting issue doesn't really pair with the rest of the main story because starting one, I'll be honest, it feels like it's a go vote propaganda issue, which I'm not really gonna shame it for because that's definitely an important thing to get people to do is voting and especially trying to get young people to vote. I'm not, I'm not gonna fault it for that, but it did, it did feel like a promotional piece. And then um, we're seeing her relationship slowly improve in regards to Nakia. Zoe, I think I said Nikki last night, her name is Zoe. Zoe was the bully who has turned into a friend. And Mike also, um, her relationship with all three of those is slowly improving. And then now her sister-in-law's little brother goes to her school as well. So we have Gabe joining in on her little crew of friends. Yeah, it's very cute. Um, I haven't finished this one. This is the one I fell asleep in the middle of, so. I can't give you a rating, but I am hopeful it'll also be a four star. All right, y'all, so that is it for today. Thank you so much for coming to my channel. I really appreciate it. Make sure to hit like and subscribe down below. I have all my socials as well as a few ways you can support me linked in the description. I come out with videos on Monday and Friday, but until then, I hope you continue to have a terrific day. Love you, bye!